A week from today, the state legislature will be gaveled into session here at the Capitol. KCRA Channel 3 established a full-time Capitol Bureau in 1964, and I was selected to do that. And it was a, it was a tough campaign year. It was a presidential year. 1964 was a year almost as important as 63, because that was the year that Lyndon Johnson signed the Civil Rights Act. So this Fair Housing Act came right at one of the hottest times in race relations. And some felt it was all right to let their prejudice against black people stand out. We had the uh, forces that wanted to overthrow the new Rumford Fair Housing Act uh, circulating a petition. They got the signatures necessary relatively easily and they qualified that for the ballot uh, that same year. So 1964, the real estate industry puts on the ballot a proposition, Proposition 14, to repeal the Rumford Fair Housing Act. And it has the support of the Republican Party. It has the support of Barry Goldwater, who is running for president as the Republican candidate. And they run on a campaign slogan, a man's home is his castle. And they want to write under law to segregate housing and to discriminate on the basis of race in housing. And that engenders a lot of interesting things around the state of California. In 1964, Orange County was a hostile community to this perspective. The, the John Birch Society was a large and ever-present uh, organization in Orange County at that time. And this is an ultra-conservative organization that, you know, uh, staunchly um, with the realtors of Orange County, were really behind um, this overthrow of the Rumford Fair Housing Act. During the uh, early 60s, there was always a connection between the South and the Birch Society, and then what we lived in, in in Orange County. And if you're for fair housing, that was a negative in most people's minds. And people like Martin Luther King were not favored here. It was a tough and vigorous campaign by both sides, and there was a lot of grassroots support in favor of Prop 14. And then a lot of people were confused because they it was, we, we who wanted fair housing were supporting no on 14. But people thought, oh, this is 14. Oh, yes, this is yes on the Rumford Act. So they would vote yes, which was actually to repeal the act. And so it was confusing and it was a very difficult time. And that's when you saw a lot of racism coming out and a lot, just uh, pouring out. People were afraid, in particular if they were owners, owners, owners of uh, apartments or owners of their own homes. Oh, oh, what's gonna happen if a black moves into my apartment? Oh, everybody else is gonna move out. Then there was the fear of the homeowner. Oh, my house isn't gonna be worth as much. If black people move into the neighborhood, they'll take over the whole neighborhood. So th that was part of the climate. There, there was a point in time that my dad approached me and said, well, I've had a lot of threats, and if something happens, I want you to take care of mom and the family. Uh, going to Southern California, uh, there were times he had an escort from the California Highway Patrol to attend meetings because it was neighborhoods that were not receptive to this legislation. So. There were times that got a little rough. The Real Estate Association put a lot of money into Prop 14. They were so fearful this would destroy their control. I remember Proposition 14 being a wedge issue where the vitriol and the embittered uh, view is that if you have a different view than me, you're going to taint the person as well as the issue. It's very gratifying in anything of this character where uh, the issue is so controversial because it constitutes what we think is a clear mandate of how the population of this state feels and we also feel as though in this uh, our local board and our state association were actually representing the majority of the people. Now in the state of California, you are facing a great issue. It is a question of whether you will continue to go forward or whether you will go backwards. 
It is a question of whether you will repeal the Rumford Fair Housing Act. It is a call for constitutional amendment that in substance will legalize segregation. And I say to you this afternoon that if this bill is passed, if this constitutional amendment comes into being, it will be a tragic setback, not only for California, not only for America, but for the cause of justice and for democracy. And it will be one of the great tragedies of the 20th century. 1964 was the year that the Republican Party held its national convention in San Francisco at the Cow Palace. 1964 was the day that I was introduced to raw politics at its worst. And that is Lewis Freeman, the news director for KDIA Radio, where I was working at that time, and I were both literally driven from the Republican convention by a rowdy mob of people sitting in the galley of the Republican convention. Not their delegates, but their supporters. And it was easy with Klan's people demonstrating in San Francisco in 64 about everything, but they had the nerve to be here. Now one of the things that happens here in Berkeley is that students are demonstrating against Prop 14. These are some of the same students who are marching on Shattuck Avenue in Berkeley at Woolworths. It's the same students who are demonstrating in Richmond against Lucky Stores because Lucky Stores won't hire black clerks for their uh, grocery stores. I came to Berkeley in 1962 to start my education at the University of California. And um, I would say that the key issues of the time were really around civil rights. And of course, Prop 14 was central to that, since it was an effort to repeal Byron Rumford's Fair Housing Act. So when we began the ad hoc committee to end discrimination, we all had our tables up on that strip of sidewalk at the corner of Bancroft and Telegraph and had our leaflets and so forth. And uh, that's where all the civil rights groups were, uh, SNCC and CORE, and I was with the Du Bois Club, and we all had our tables up. So the principle upon which free speech movement was organized was not whether or not you were for or against Proposition 14, but your right to advocate for or against Proposition 14. And that's what united us. In that context, when the administration announced that we can no longer advocate for civil rights, that we can no longer advocate for change in the Bay Area, that we can no longer advocate for opposition to Proposition 14, when those things became clear to us, then um, we had a, a sense of urgency. And when we saw what one African American in the assembly could do, which is to get so much legislation passed, including this fair housing, uh, act, then, you know, the consciousness that we had was we got to not only keep this guy in Sacramento, but we got to make sure that his legislation doesn't get defeated by popular vote. And of course, that was the start of the free speech movement. So the two struggles for no on 14 and for freedom of speech were totally intertwined. Public opinion in California was running against the fair housing measure. The issue was out there. I mean, it was People could, I think by election day, they could understand what the issue was. Hard to go to the polls and really not know at, at the time of the polling where you stood on the Prop 14. I think that most of us who uh, were in the thick of this uh, fight on Proposition 14 from its very inception were confident that we were eventually going to win it. But I think very few of us had, uh, would admit that we would win it by such a wide margin. So the voters of California have overwhelmingly rejected the Fair Housing Act and voted in favor of housing discrimination and housing segregation. You know, the victory ratio throughout the state was two to one, but of all the counties in California, Orange County was three to one for Proposition 14. So when this bill by Byron Rumford that had been signed into law by the governor of California was put to the vote, it was rejected. 
it was a crushing blow to many who thought we were really moving forward. It's just devastating. Uh, when you work that hard, you do what some people said couldn't be done, and to have it taken away by a vote of the people, uh, despite the legislative victory, I think had to be very much uh, uh, disappointing, if not devastating, to Byron Rumford. The day after the election, when it was clear that the Rumford thing had gone down to defeat, Sacramento Attorney Nathaniel Colley, who was on good terms with Governor Brown, was the instigator of the legal action. Ned Colley was certainly uh, Mr. Civil Rights, and he knew the law like, like no one else. Uh, he was highly respected in regards to his pursuit of many of these restrictions that were on the books at the time. The NAACP, whom I represent, is preparing at this present time a suit to be filed in the state Supreme Court directing the Secretary of State and the state printer not to take any action to include Proposition 14 as a part of the state constitution. Uh, where will it go from That's what there? started this long process through the courts, eventually going to the U.S. Supreme Court. And the Mulkeys, in their lawsuit against Reitman, find themselves back in court because Reitman has gone back to court and asked the court to dismiss their case to, in technical terms, to issue a summary judgment because housing discrimination is now legal again and the court agrees and the case is dismissed or judgment is entered against the Mulkey family.